Welcome to part two of our parallel circuit exploration. In this section, we're going to look at some simulations of DC parallel circuits. And we start with a little voltage source with a couple of resistors. So remember the key element on parallel is that the voltage everywhere is the same. Remember, we treat these wires as ideal, perfect conductors, zero resistance. So this 12 volt source is applied directly across this 3K and this 6K. And of course, we assume that this ammeter here is ideal as well. So this means that we would have 12 volts across 3K, which Ohm's law tells us would be four milliamps, and 12 volts across the 6K, which would get us 2 milliamps, so 2 and 4 would be 6. That's what we should get off the ammeter. Alternately, we could figure out the effective resistance of this parallel pair using product sum rule. 3 in parallel at 6K would give us 2K, and 12 volts divided by the 2K would give us 6 milliamps as a source current. We could also do current divider rule. So knowing the 6 milliamps, for example, if we wanted to find the current through R1, we would take the opposite value divided by the sum, 6K over 9K times the 6 mils, and that would give us 4 mils. And finally, remember that Kirchhoff's current law tells us that the summation of currents entering a node has to equal the summation of currents leaving. So we've got 6 coming in, 4 and 2 going out. All right, let's check a uh, quick DC analysis here and see what we get. And right off the bat, you can see that uh, we have our 12 volts basically everywhere, right across R1, across R2, um, the points 1 and 2, which you know are idealized, that meter is zero internal resistance, also 12 volts. The ammeter is giving us 6 milliamps of source current, and then, as expected, 4 mils and 2 mils through our two resistors. Beautiful. All right, so what happens if we add a third resistor? Let's do that. And I am going to change this to 2K ohms. And just wire it direct, directly across, like so. So we have three parallel resistors now. Now we already determined that these two are uh, a parallel equivalent of 2K. So that would be 2K in parallel with 2K, which would give us 1K, which would indicate that we would have uh, 12 divided by 1K or 12 milliamps going through the meter. We would still have the 4 and the 2 through these two elements. And 12 volts across 2K would give us 6. So again, that will add up, right? 4 and 2 is 6 plus 6 here, 12. So again, that entering current has to equal the three exiting currents. And let's see what we get. And once again, we can see that each of the three resistors have 12 volts, 12 milliamps total from the current source, and the current splitting up as expected. So every time we add a resistor in parallel, that's just one more path for current and therefore more current coming out of our voltage source because we're basically reducing the overall resistance or enhancing the conductivity, however you want to look at that, and therefore more total current. But the current in each branch stays the same because we haven't changed the voltage source. We're just adding more branches and therefore more possible places for the current to flow. Okay. Now what happens if we replace our voltage source with a current source. All right, so I'm going to go over here and grab a constant current source. And we'll wire him in. And I'm going to change this current to 12 milliamps. All right. Now, in this case, we have 12 milliamps from the source and that will have to split between these two resistors. So our meter should measure the 12 mils. We don't right off the bat know what the voltage is. The voltage is actually a variable now. Um, we know this is parallel 2K equivalent. 
So 12 mils through 2K should give us 24 volts, right, from this point to this point. And that 24 volts sitting over the 3K, 24 divided by 3 will give us 8 mils, and then divided by uh, 6K will give us half that. So let's see what we get. And sure enough, there's our 24 volts. There's the 12 um, uh, milliamps that we had. Oops, hit the wrong one. Um, but we have our 12 milliamps through the, through the meter here. 8 milliamps through R1, as expected. 4 milliamps through R2. Everything looks good. Once again, let's add that third resistor and see what happens. And again, directly in parallel. And we're going to leave that at 2K, right? So this is exactly what we had last time. So we know that, um, again, 2K in parallel with 3 and 6, which is 2. 2 in parallel with 2, that's going to get us 1K. So that 1K total with a 12 milliamp current source should get us only 12 volts. And consequently, a reduction in the uh, currents through each of these paths. So this is quite unlike the case with the voltage source. Now we only have a, a fixed amount of current to begin with, and as we add more paths, that current has to be sort of divvied out among, you know, more mouths to feed, so to speak. So now we see the 12 volts, right? And we can see, again, there's the 12 mils coming through the am uh, ammeter, as expected. And we see that the currents have, in fact, essentially halved, because we have half the total resistance now. That gives us half the voltage across each component, right? Everybody's 12 volts. And therefore, the currents in the individual um, resistors that we started with are cut in half. Instead of 8 and 4, we have 4 and 2, and then 6 mils through the uh, R3 through the 2K. It still, however, has to be true that Kirchhoff's current law, the current entering the node, has to equal the currents leaving. So we have 12 coming in here. R1 leaves 4. So right here, there's that balance. There's 8 milliamps here, and then that splits again. Right? It splits again into 2 and 6. And if you were coming back this way, now we've got 2 mils here, and that combines with this six. So in this wire, once again, there would be eight. So we've got eight coming in, eight coming out. And then that combines with the four milliamps that came down through R1, and we're back to 12 going back into the current source. And once again, everything balances really nice. So a little bit, a little bit of a different issue here when we use a current source. Now, the last thing we might consider is having multiple sources. So if we go over and we look at uh, a second current source, right, and uh, you, you can add current sources in parallel. You would not want to put voltage sources in parallel. Um, rare occasions when you would do that. Um, I'm going to change this to 4 mils. Now notice the directions of these current currents. So here we have 12 coming in, and I've got four going the other way. So if we look at this as one sort of combinatorial mo uh, node, 12 in, 4 out leaves 8. There's only 8 milliamps now for these three resistors. And since I know this pair is equal to 2K, the same as this, half of it's going to be here, and half of it will be split here. And it will be split 2 to 1 once again between these two, right? Twice as much here as here. So what ends up happening? Well, all right, you know, there's the 8 volts we were talking about, right? The 8 mils through effectively 1K. And sure enough, 12 mils through this current, um, yeah, this ammeter. There's the 4 mils, right, half the total uh, that we would be looking at. And then, again, the, the 2 to 1 ratio between these two resistors at 2 and 2 thirds and 1 and a third mils. 
But again, Kirchhoff's current law, 12 comes in. It's just that now, instead of just three resistors, we have this fourth path, which is pulling four milliamps out uh, from this current source. So that only leaves the eight to divide between these. Well, what do you think would happen if we reverse the direction of that current source? Well, now we'd be pumping 16 milliamps in, right? Just think about that for a sec. And what do you think the values are going to be? Are you done thinking? All right, well, again, 2K, 2K. The total coming into this node is now 12 plus 4 or 16. So I would expect half of that through this resistor, in other words, 8 mils, and then half through this combination, 8. And again, these are going to split up 2 to 1 because it's a 3K and a 6K. And sure enough, we see 16 volts because now we have 16 mils through a total of 1K. And there's the 8 mils through our 3. And again, there's the 2 to 1 split between our 1 and our 2 that adds up to 8. Beautiful. Well, you know, when you're in lab or if you're working on a circuit, um, you might inadvertently short a component or open a component. So, you know, if you had miswired this such that um, R3 was open and maybe a lead is just dangling, and I'm going to just delete this, okay? Um, matter of fact, let's clean it up here a little bit. What do we see happening? Well, we still have a total of 16 milliamps pumping into here, but now there's only 2K instead of 1K. And, you know, what we see immediately is, wow, look at, look at how much the voltage has jumped up, right? It's, now it's 32 volts instead of 16 volts. We have twice the resistance with that same 16 milliamps. So voltage goes way up. And then what ends up happening with these two currents? Well, they're going to jump up too, right? So um, if they have twice the voltage, they're going to get twice the current. It's just that simple. So we would take that uh, 32 volts, you know, we would divide it by 3K. That gives us a little over 10 mils. Then you take that 30 volts, you divide it by, uh, excuse me, 32 volts, you divide it by 6K, and, you know, we see a little over 5 mils. And there we go. Okay. So an open can do um, you know, something pretty interesting here. If you shorted one of these resistors, that's particularly evil because what ends up happening is all the current's going to go through the short. Remember, the current takes the path of least resistance. So if you had a choice between a 3K and a 6K and, you know, a resistor that was accidentally shorted, you just have a bar here. You just have a wire, okay? Um, then clearly, you know, you, this, this voltage is going to just cave to nothing. Or maybe you went up to the uh, uh, resistor bin and you picked the wrong resistor. Maybe you never learned your color code. So instead of a, a 6K, you know, maybe you just put 6 ohms in here. Yeah, it's only a factor of a thousand, right? What do you think is going to happen? Well, you know, look at, look at this voltage. It has just caved. You know, we just have not even a uh, hundred millivolts. Now you're pumping 16 milliamps almost entirely through the six ohm. You know, if we look at the, um, the two resistors here, we look at their currents, you know, R1 is only pulling about 32 microamps, and nearly all of the 16 milliamps, right, 15.97, is going through this little 6 ohm. Because now, you know, look at the ratio, right? It's 3,000 versus 6. So all the current's going to take the, this path of least resistance. And as we made this smaller and smaller and smaller, this issue would just sort of snowball until finally... You know, if you shorted this, we'd be looking at zero volts here. All of your current would be going through the short. There wouldn't be any going through R1, all right? But, you know, KCL still works out. Okay, pretty dynamic situation. If you had a voltage source over here and you shorted it, oh, that's not good. 
Because think about that for a second. The voltage source is trying to maintain a certain value of voltage. And by shorting it, the current goes through the roof. As a matter of fact, in the lab, if you did that, um, if you accidentally shorted this, you would wind up, right, probably clicking the, uh, you know, the, the, the overload relay or whatever the power supply has, um, and you wouldn't really get much of anything. And we can, we can kind of uh, investigate that here very quickly by going back to a voltage source. All right, so um, let's put a 12-volt source back in there just to see, you know, what we are looking at, okay? Um, this is where we started, and I'll just uh, sort of redo this, but now we have a 6-ohm resistor, and you're going to see this thing cave. We got the 12 volts, but man, compare these two, right? I mean, this current just like disappears compared to this current. Again, 3000 versus six. So this current just goes right into the dumper, it just caves. All the current, well, virtually all the current comes out here because you basically have six ohms when you put 3K in parallel with 6K. You divide that into 12 volts and you got a two amp current. So there's your two amp current. And then we look at it, well, we got four milliamps still coming through here. And then, uh, you know, nearly two, two amps, just you know, two amps minus four mils, basically, going through this uh, R2 value. And if we went extreme with that, you know, you can see just how ugly that might be. Um, here's an example of something that might happen in the lab. I'm going to return this back to 6K. And just to verify that everything is... Uh, proper. Let's just do a real quick table of results over here. There's our 12 volts, 6 and 4, 2 milliamps. Everything's great. This is where we started, okay? So you come into lab and you hook up this circuit and you say, oh, you know, I want to I want to take a, a a current measurement. And you accidentally, you know, mess up your, um, your ammeter, okay? So, you know, I'm just going to grab an ammeter over here. Uh, this is a common fault. Remember, voltage meters always go across because voltage is two points. It's a potential difference. So you want the voltage, you put it from here to here, right? You put it across. But an ammeter measures at a single point. You have to break open the circuit because it's a flow rate, right? What's the charge per unit time flowing through this thing? But it's, it's an unfortunate but uh, common error to do this. Oops, get over there. Um, you know, you want to measure the current through this resistor and you put it across just like you would with a, a voltmeter. No, no, this is terrible because the ideal internal resistance of this meter is zero. And ultimately, at least on paper, if this really is zero, the current goes to infinity, right? I mean, you basically get a divide by zero error when you try and do this. Um, Oops, All right? Irregular circuit. It's basically telling you, no, that's that's not right. You know, um, you could model this a little better by uh, maybe putting an internal resistance. That would happen with a, a real world meter. You know, there would be a finite amount of resistance here, but it might be just a fraction of an ohm. So what typically would happen in lab, right? I mean... This thing is going to have a, a maximum current, but you know, a typical bench power supply could produce several amps of current, now, depending on the model. You know, five, ten, twenty amps of current. Um, however, your meter, your DMM, is probably fused at maybe one or two amps. So what ends up happening if you hook it up like this is current goes through, boom, pops the fuse. You measure no current, right? Your current uh, measurement is dead. On some meters, that will also render the voltage measurement dead. Um, so if suddenly your meter doesn't work or if the, if the current measurement on it doesn't work, it's likely that you've blown the fuse and it might be because of this, right? So always remember, voltage across, current in line like this. 
That's how you set up an ammeter. Not like this. Bad, bad, evil. Ugh. Okay. So that I don't leave you with that image in your head. We'll get rid of that. Okay, that pretty much covers what we need to need to look at. Hope you had a good one.